Welcome back to my new home HVAC installation video. This is part four. I'm not sure how many more left. I'm kind of doing it on the fly. I'm trying to uh, leave as much fat as possible without it becoming boring. So hope you guys enjoy this and see you in the next one. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna work on the vent pipe. First, I gotta see. First, I gotta see where it's going to land. And by that, I mean where it's gonna land up there. So first, I'm gonna grab my elbow, put it more or less where it's gonna go. And then I'm gonna get my plumb, which is just a string with a weight on it. And I'm gonna see where it lands up, up here. I know you can't see. See where it lands up here. And that's where I'm gonna cut the hole. At least that was the original plan, but then I ended up changing my mind and I'll explain why later. So I'm going to be looking at the 45 degree because that's what our inspectors want here. 45 puts me at about there. So I'm going to have to come out close to the apex up here. I don't want to come out in this spot because it's in the front. That mean, and in the apex of the roof, if you can see, is within 10 feet so that means i'm gonna have to go really high because i have to go two feet past the apex of the roof now i know what you're thinking why don't you just uh install the furnace on towards the back part of the house and that way your vent pipe can come up uh, towards the back of the house which yeah i would agree that would be a good idea for the vent pipe but that's not my priority my priority is the sound level if that furnace is above a bedroom which it would if i would have put it towards the back of the house then that noise will be coming down into the bedroom when they're trying to sleep at night and they have a heater running. So whenever possible, I put the furnace above a living room or a kitchen uh, or a dining room, not above a bedroom. That's what I'm talking about. See the vent pipe? If it's within 10 feet, then you have to go to feet minimum from the apex to the bottom of the cap or to the top of the pipe and three feet minimum. So if I get, if I come out about right here, then I only have to go up about three feet and that'll get me two feet above the ridge. I guess they call it, I call it the apex, but the ridge, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Just something else I wanted to point out on the vent pipe that if I ran it uh, less than 45 degrees, it would be considered horizontal. So if it was like at 30 degrees, uh, that would mean that it's horizontal and on the installation instructions it tells you that uh, whatever amount of pipe you run at horizontal 75% of it has to be vertical so for example if I ran 10 feet at 30 degrees that would be considered horizontal so now I would have to run 30 feet vertical you see where that would be just crazy talk so I, th I thought I'd explain this the way that I understand it, which is here's my angle. Um, the vent pipe is going to be at, at a 45. See the 45 right there, the bubble, it's centered, 45 right here. So anything smaller than that will be considered horizontal. So here I want to show you how I like to cut these flashings into the roof which is pretty much uh, you do the oval hole and then after that you cut the nails off of the shingles that are on the top that don't allow the flashing to slide all the way through and that's it so now i made the hole and i put the flashing uh not enough time to connect the vent pipe through the hole i'm actually expecting rain tomorrow so i'm just gonna put a couple of screws here hold it into place leave it tape shut and we should be all good till tomorrow or day after there it is the new uh, vent pipe opening and so here is my sediment trap for the gas line I know that not every state requires it but here in California we do um, it's supposed to be in the last bend where you're supposed to have that which in this case would be inside the furnace but um, I've done that before and the inspectors don't like it so I have to build it out and bring it out here okay so now we got the drain started but uh, this is our clean out for our primary um, I used to put a union, but I see that these these are actually 
real easy to use to clean because I, yeah, I have a, an elbow that goes in here so that'll per blow that way and then I can blow down with a gallo gun or or what have you um, and then my secondary is gonna go over a window down that direction over there so that's where we're at I still have to run the track pipe and bring it here somewhere to connect to this gas flex that's where we are this is the main thing that I hate about that hole cutting tool for plenums is all this debris that's left over. Wow, this is just great. Rain! No! Gonna have to work in the rain today. So I have to go back up on the roof because I, <laughs> I didn't put enough tape. And a few drops are going through the flashing. I have to get back up there. Hopefully I don't fall down. I'm gonna take an umbrella. A little extra tape. Hopefully I don't slip. So there you can see where the two little drops were falling through here. So I had to go and put some more tape. It wasn't a lot, just a few drops. You could tell right here, just a little bit. There's nothing down there on the floor. All right, so here we have our seven inch connected now. Those are 10 inch, 12 inch. There's a 12 inch in the back. Everything uh, getting ready to strap. We're just gonna put a couple of straps just so that in case the inspector wants them. I don't really think they're necessary, but we'll put them in there just to keep the inspector smiling and yeah so here I just used extra insulation from one of the other ducts just to make it look nice and shiny like those over there different angle there you go okay okay so we drilled our spotter here this is where we plan to put our thermostat this is also the shaft that had that floor heater and the floor heater on the other side of this wall. That's the shaft they use to go up with the vent pipe. So I know that that's, that's a pretty empty area right there. I'm just going to put this tape here so in case somebody walks by. They don't stab themselves in the eye. Oh, we found some leaks here. Sí. Le dije yo que iba a poner poquito chapopote cuando regrese al techo. Sí, alrededor de la pipa. So we found some leaks here. Looks like they replaced the roof and they didn't seal this very well. So they might have forgotten to seal around the pipe. So I'm gonna seal around it then there's another one back over there that i'm gonna we're just gonna do it to be nice to our customer okay so i i believe i cleared the vent pipe now i'm gonna go upstairs if you are new to the channel please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever i put out a new video Ah, no alcanzo a ver ahí, me estorba esa insulación. I can't see because that insulation is in the way. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's my. Okay. See it there? There it is right there. That's what we're gonna run our thermostat through. Okay, so now we know this is good. Now we can go ahead and drill the hole. So, quick tip, 
if you don't have any uh, blue tape, you can use your duct tape, but you're gonna have to put it on something that's a little dusty, like this drop cloth, and that'll take away the, the stickiness, the tackiness. So that way, once you feel that it's not stick that sticky, then you can use it lightly, just lightly press on this. So when I drill that hole, the dust that falls through here is just gonna come on the drop cloth. It'll be easier to clean up later. easier. Oh, I'm gonna grab this little rod that I have right here. Let's see if I can reach it and tie my thermostat wire to it. right there. as possible. So I'm not gonna put the batteries on this thermostat because I've gone to uh, check on systems before that weren't working because the batteries exploded inside and damaged the thermostat. Ah, uh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to work here. Well, maybe. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. Probably, probably do that. I'll probably come out to here with the line set. You just put the line set color right there. Secondary drain, probably over this window. Actually, I ended up coming out on the window to the left with the secondary. So even though it's raining, I decided that I might as well just start running that refrigerant lines. Um, I didn't want to at first because it's kind of a drag, but you know, the rain wasn't going to wait for us. So we just, we had to do it. So. Um, that's where I'm going right now. I'm going to go uh, grab the line set and then start pulling it towards that that part where that axis where I crawled in right there, that opening. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring it around to that side, and then I'm gonna exit to the side of the house, go up the wall, and then into the attic, and then cover it with a uh, we call it a line set cover, which is the, just a galvanized sheet metal cover to. to to protect and to dress up the, the pipes. You don't want some ugly pipes coming up the side of your house. That looks ugly. Okay, listo? So normally I would have like some Bluetooth, um, you know, earbuds on to communicate with whoever is helping me. Uh, but I forgot them, so I had my phone on speaker, which was really annoying because I had to have the phone on me. And typically, I would just leave it on the tray, on my tool tray, um, which makes keeps my phone safe. And then just have an earbud in, in one of my ears, and th that way I'll be able to communicate with whoever is helping me. But in this case, I had to do it the hard way. All right. So we have the copper ran underneath the house 
and exiting through the other side through another vent similar to that one <clears throat> quick tip don't forget to keep track of how much pipe you're using this is a 50 footer and it just got me to the other side and I still need to go up and then into the attic to where my uh, evaporator coil is at so probably gonna need another maybe 15 feet but yeah all that you have to factor that in when you charge your system so now I'm in the attic. I'm trying to get situated. I got my measuring tape. I'm gonna measure uh, to make sure that I drill the holes on the outside uh, in the correct spot so that they line up uh, for my secondary drain, my primary, my gas, and my refrigerant lines. Everything now has to line up. Our rods in there. And now, we can go into the attic and see when that comes out. All right, so we have assessed the situation here and looks like we are going to be able to go through there. Because our line set already ran. Now I'm getting the line set cover ready to go. This one is a two piece. I like two piece because they look better. They cover up any imperfections in the wall. If the wall is going up and down, you get a little bit of, of slack here. So if the line set cover is moving up and down, you still have coverage. Whereas the one piece, it'll just be left floating if there's a bump in the stucco, in the, which happens. So after I pre-drilled the holes on the line set cover, on the back part of it, um, now I have to line it up with the copper and put a level on it and make sure it's plumb and then mark the holes on the stucco so that I can drill and put those anchors in there to hold it. You don't need to tap it that hard, it goes in pretty easy. So you might not have noticed, but I actually had to order an extra wide line set cover. Typically, they're just four inches wide. So I ordered a six inch wide line set cover, which leaves me plenty of room. As you can see, my hand right next to the line set cover leaves me plenty of room for the drain line and for the gas line to be able to both uh, fit through the same line set cover So this is what the the flexible gas pipe looks like. It's called track pipe uh, It has this um, This plastic like a th really tough black plastic That wraps around uh, the pipe itself. The pipe is uh, aluminum and It's it's pretty flexible uh, But it's still tough at the same time because it's like a, it's a corrugated metal So now it's time to connect the, the track pipe to the valve that I installed earlier. Alright, so we have a copper right here. You can see right there where it comes in. If not, let me see if I can shine the spotlight. And then here's her flexible gas pipe. Sorry, evaporator coil, where we're gonna connect. So put the metal strap. Try for none of these edges to be digging into the pipe or touching the 3 8 or cutting the thermostat wire. Make sure that that's not happening. So now I'm going to uh, connect uh, the copper to the coil and this is just a dry fit like I'll just I'll put all the fittings together um, Sometimes I need to put straps to make sure they don't pop out of their location 
and then I'll go to the condenser and put the copper together there as well and then I'll connect the nitrogen uh, as I braze y con esta no me preocupo How does that look? Does that look pretty? I think so. <laughs> 